it's Lori Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Ow. Um, and I am back in my courtyard. This poor, tragic arrangement has been neglected for at least a year. You know, I normally have plant cans all over in the courtyard um, as we move from job to job. So... I just, I decided, and I told you this in a walkabout Wednesday not long ago, that I want to do a little better with the courtyard instead of, you know, it being a plant junkyard. I want to keep it looking good because I see it multiple times every day. And I also am a firm believer in really addressing the areas in my yard that I do see every day, whether it be by the trash cans or where Bentley takes a crap or my courtyard where I enter and exit every day through the door. Uh, that's where I want to focus my energies and make sure that I have something really pretty and inspiring to look at. So, you know, this isn't, I, all the plants in here are healthy. They're just really overgrown and getting a little leggy. Now like this, this uh, Aeonium Sunburst, this is its growing season, um, so it's fine to manipulate and to work with it. And it's just, it's an Arboretum Aeonium, so it grows on a trunk, and I'm not loving that. So I wanna get this out of here. Oh, in BTW, this chair, I didn't make this. I bought this at a Master Gardener seminar. Um, it's got a wire basket underneath, a chicken wire basket, and then it's stuffed with one of those moss liners, you know, that you can get at the box store or the garden center. And then there's some soil in that. So that's how this is constructed. And it's worked clever out. Idea. It's worked out well. And yeah, it's a really clever idea. So that came out easy peasy. Uh, now, you know, I'm going to do what I do with the detritus. Oh, God, I just love doing this. This is like a year of dead leaves. I feel so great. And then I'm also, as I'm, you know, removing the detritus, I'm looking at and evaluating the other little plants. Because, you know, you don't want to rip everything out. I like, like, I love this. I love how this ghosty is, is all trunky and kind of sticking out the side because it looks really ancient. It looks old, established, like it's been here for a minute. You know, my, I got string of pearls growing out through the through the bottom of the chair that are really healthy and happy. And I'm just going to let that ride. These little string of pearls are hanging down like that. So I just tucked them up this way so they'd be a little bit more noticeable. I'm hoping that this takes off and does better now that I'm working it over and going to give it my attention. So looking at this, looking at this, this Fred Ives is another one that is too tall in here. I'm not loving that. Yeah. See, and remember, all of these plants go in as cuttings, so they're really, really easy to manipulate and work with. Didn't, you know, have a chance to establish a ton of roots, so it was pretty easy to pull out. Clean it up, pull off all those yucky bottom leaves, check for mealybug, aphids, or scale. Don't see any. All is well. Good deal. Now, huh, okay. All right. This, I've got a crassula, or I'm um, sorry, Aeonium hawarthia back here. Haworthia is the red-headed step cousin to Aeonium kiwi, meaning it's non-variegated and it's kind of, you know, it's not very exciting. We can do better. So I'm going to take this out of here because I don't love that. And besides, I have another, I, oops, I have another idea for this area. Anyway, so, you know, when I worked this over the last time, it was, I was just kind of in a hurry and I was just filling in gaps. I wasn't really giving a whole lot of thought to what plants I was putting in here. So we'll get that out. Clean up my detritus. You all have assured me that you don't mind, you know, watching the paint dry as I clean up detritus. So I'm holding you to that. Okay. There, I've created another spot love. See, and I haven't touched this yet because I'm just not sure yet what I want to do with that, if anything. But yeah, this is just really underwhelming back here. Absolutely nothing wrong with that little rosette. That would be really cute in my gutters or in another small arrangement somewhere else, but it's lost in here, isn't it? You can't really see it. It's not doing anything. Now this little bit 
of Haworthia. I'm feeling like I might want to keep that where it's at. I kind of like how this is all knitted together right here. So I'll just let that ride right now. I've got another little, I think this is a Sedevaria rosette that's lost behind that Crassula. I'll take that out. Okay, now I think I'm ready to rumble. My vision for this, this time, this iteration is height. I want height back here. So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh soil. This soil, this is just leftover can dirt, I call it. You know, we had plants. There were plants in that can, and we didn't use all the dirt, so it's just leftover from the nursery. It's got some nice fertilizer in it, probably, and some vermiculite and some perlite. Um, so these little succulents are going to be spoiled. But, I mean, why not, right? Give it a little something-something. Okay, I'm going to add a little in the pot, too. Now, I could take this whole thing apart and start over with fresh soil. That would be so fun. And one day I will do that, but I'm just not feeling like I want to do that right now. So if you've got a party, event, a graduation, a birthday, something, and you're like, oh, my God, I have got to get outside and do something with these pots and these plants... <laughs> You know, smoke and mirrors, friends. You don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel every time. Okay, I am ready to go. And maybe a little more back here, because why not? A little mound. All right, so my height is going to be none other than my very good friend, Aloe Blue Elf. The Blue Elfs are, you know, usually a snail gross are usually an understory plant they don't get a whole lot of attention except at this time of year because the blooms are so awesome so i'm going to stick this guy back here i oh, loving to the way the blooms are picking up the colors in the sign loving that and remember with succulents more is definitely more so cram stuff in tight, particularly when you're working with cuttings, because these puppies are going to shrink a bit while they are reestablishing their root system. Okay. All right. Love it. Um, now, I'm going to descend a little bit. So I picked some Crassula Argentia Sunset from around the pond that was throwing off some good color. You know, it's not, God, Bentley, it's not super yellow, but it's pretty, pretty good. And I'm going to tuck that in behind the blue elf. See, this is another reason, you know, why you should add a little soil. So you have something to stick your plants in. So they'll stand up without you having to work too hard. Okay, if your succulent stands up, that's right, you have done your job. Okay, all right, now, something that I'm super excited about is this Echeveria agavoides ebony. This beautiful, beautiful collectible plant was languishing in the backyard underneath the raised bed in the in the terracotta chicken planter and was completely lost i want it front and center where i'm going to see it and enjoy it now here's you can see there's a lot going on here with the roots i don't need all that and i've got a tight space so i'm just going to trim those up a little bit it's all good okay now i'm going to pull this little sunburst out of here too to make room for my agavoides. I'm going to pop her in right here. Now every time I walk up to the front door I will look over here and I will see that and my heart will sing. I'm going to make my agavoides a little umbrella too with this aeonium sunburst. Now I'm trimming it because it's too tall right? 
So I'm just gonna cut it and then I'm gonna prop it right here. It is making contact with the soil. It's not really planted, but that's all right. How's that, Hanny? Is that good? And there's probably still a little bit of holes. yeah holes there. So I will take our our pup, stick it in over here, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. Then right in front though too. Where? where? Are, you probably ought to right pick here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I still have you know I still have some little things like we talked about these cute li these little cuties. You know all your little cuties can be moved front and center. Loving, loving. What else? What are the leftovers? Here's another, the set of areas. See, this just isn't, that's not very cute, is it? But this top part is. So let's cut this off. And if you kind of lift under the sunburst, you can, there's a gap. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a gap there, yeah. in here yeah. too, which I will address. But I'm going to put this little guy right here. And then I've got a few other things. I wanted to pull in some orange. This is uh, left over from a job, so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that little, you know, the little root ball there because I can. Why not? I'm not, you know, a total sadist, plant sadist. Uh, set that right back there, and then maybe one that isn't blooming. There we go. And all right, let's do this is a little Echeveria faux dash 42. You poor thing, what a horrible, horrible name! Faux 42. Hey, what's your name? Faux 42. Um, little cutie. I think this is one that starts with an S, right? Anywho, beautiful, and I'm going to put it in the little pot right there. Just love that. And then take, everything is so big. What a horrible, horrible problem to have, right? My multi-tool, open this up a little bit, tuck the little sedum in there. And another one right above it. Remember, we don't want to see any dirt. See, it's good in your pots, you know, your tip pots to build the soil up high um, around the back rim. So your plants will show up over top. That's something I learned doing my topsy-turvy in the backyard. Okay, then this cotyledon whoa what a hot mess it is but I still like I like the color and the texture so I'm just gonna start over with it and pop pop it in just into gaps where I see where I see dirt good you know what I wish I had I wish I had some more of the little rubertinctums to tuck in but in the meantime I can use some of these poor Haworthia and tuck them into the gaps. Every plant has its place. Emma Wright. Thank you, Aeonium Haworthia, for pinch hitting. Wonderful. Right here. Does it look a little gappy right there? Something in right there. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to take this Fred Ives. I'm going to trim it up a bit and stick it right here in front of the blue elf. Beautiful. Right? Oh my gosh. So what did that take us? Like 10 minutes? 14. 
14 minutes from tragic to terrific. Get out there, you guys. Even those of you that can't get outside yet, you can still putter around under your grow lights, right? You can still mess around with your plants, even if it's just applying fresh top dressing, fertilizing, doing, you know, doing a little plant maintenance. Um, play with them. It's so fun. And I want you guys to have a really good day. So hope this inspired. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with the new and improved and your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.